Sir Simon Clark called on MPs to oust Rishi Sunak to prevent being, quote, massacred at the polls. Let's Joining us now through. is the legend, the legend, Quentin Let's political sketch writer and good friend of the show. Where are you? The, I think that legend? <laughs> Quentin, truthfully, you don't need to write something this week. No. Potentially Sir Simon's done it for you. I wouldn't take this Simon Clark business too seriously. He's a funny chap, Clark. Terribly polite, uh, but bites like a ferret. And um, <laughs> it's, a, it's an odd mixture. So does a ferret have a, a strong or a weak bite? Oh, you've never been bitten by a ferret. <laughs> really sharp, really sharp. Have teeth. you been bitten by a ferret? I have, yeah. My, Why? my late brother kept them. And uh, you, know, you try, you go along and stroke them. The children get excited and want to stroke the ferret. And then has a go at you and uh, you regret it. You, for weeks, you've punctured. Clark's an interesting one, though, because I'm of the mindset, I don't know what Rosie thinks, Quentin, that... The, the, I mean, they're famous for tearing themselves apart. And you say don't make too much of this. All I see now is this rabble of Tory MPs who probably know what's coming, who are either trying to defend themselves, promote themselves, or be able to say, I stood up against him and vote for me, I'm still your MP. He was one of the 11 who voted against Rwanda, big fan of Boris, big fan of um, uh, Liz Truss, was never going to be a fan <coughs> of Sunak. But I wanted to put to you something that somebody who I wouldn't re repeat their name to you told me this week, is that Sunak actually isn't a very good politician. Well, he's not very ruthless. Uh, he's not very... Um, he's not very vulgar. He lacks that, uh, the street smarts, and I don't think he has popular appeal, but nor does the man he's going to be facing at the no. general election. So um, those things may not matter so much. But, I mean, I'm surprised, for instance, yesterday when he was giving a statement about what's going on in the Red Sea at the moment, a, uh, another type of politician would have done a sort of Donald Trump about this and would have beat their chest and said, yeah, we're, we're uh, beating the heck out of these hooties. But uh, Sunak is very restrained and doesn't... No emotion. Well, no, he, I think he has some emotion. He obviously has some emotion, but he doesn't portray... He doesn't sort of... Uh, he he do doesn't go for the low blows very yeah. much. And he doesn't, he, he doesn't use the sort of low-grade munitions that other politicians would use in such a case. Is he toast? He looks like it, doesn't it? I mean, in some senses, Simon Clark is right in saying that the polls look terrible for the Tories. But in the other sense, Simon Clark is delusional. Because it's not going to happen. The Parliamentary Conservative Party is not going to uh, oust Sunak, unless I'm completely well, fritz about this. He sort of admits in his letter and, that and it is a ridiculous plan. He says people is. are going to say this is ridiculous, but well, his is. argument is that it's more ridiculous to stick with Sunak. Well, no, 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 but no, actually he's wrong about that. In 2010, at the start of 2010, it was an election year, and Labour looked at getting rid of Gordon Brown. And there was a day, a day and a half, when it looked as though Gordon was going to be ousted and they were going to put up... David Miliband instead. Had they done that, Labour would have lost the general election much more heavily to David Cameron, I think. To because... Miliband? I always thought Miliband would have no, been a good... Em no, no, I no? think they. Okay. I think the public would have said, look, Cameron's got his, his ships in, in a row and uh, Labour are tearing themselves apart. And as it as it, uh, come the result, it was a very close thing and, and uh, Cameron didn't really win the election. No. But uh, Labour just did a bit worse. So I think uh, that, that it's probably but wrong... But 27 to... points. 27, 27 points, big amount. But Massive amount. Got a tax-cutting budget coming up and they might retrieve a bit of ground on that. And the more that people look at Keir Starmer, they might think, my goodness, is, what is there? What yeah. is there? I mean, yesterday he couldn't even say the word typhoon as in RAF jets, he said typhoon made it sound like a brand of tea. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a dud. He's a what, dud. What do you think Simon Clark's trying, trying to do here? Is it a bit of like a rallying cry to his colleagues? Is it supposed to be a warning shot to the Personal Prime Minister? What, what, is, what do you think he's doing? You'll have to ask the ferret himself <laughs> and say, what is your strategy here, maestro? Mm. I, I can't discern one. Mm. It's interesting. Uh, let's talk about Lord David Cameron. I, I find... I said something earlier. I'd love your take on this, Quentin. I find it ironic that our now Foreign Secretary, who is heading to the Middle East to, cause, uh, to call for a humanitarian pause... But I think he's going to see someone in Iran as well, isn't he? I think it's quite an interesting... Ironic that he led a government whose austerity measures destroyed our military. Fact. That's where it started. Our military was stronger before Cameron came in. True or false? Uh, yeah, well, what was the True. result? What was the cause of austerity? Uh, there was no, a bit of not, a I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying crisis. that it wasn't necessary and painful. Absolutely what I'm saying necessary. is you can date back the days our military went from 40 frigates to now 10 to our armed forces at 73,000 
to the beginning of that coalition no, government? No, you can go much later. earlier. You can go back to John Major uh, re, 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 you know, mucking about with the regiments, uh, and uh, Tony Blair then didn't do much for the army either. So uh, and and the navy. So I think it goes back a heck of a long long way. It's an interesting debate though, right now, isn't it? Because with everything that's going on in the world, Ben Wallace did one. Grant Shapp says we need more. And I guess that's probably a conservative policy that I would have thought would have helped them in the next 12 months. Yeah, but you, the, the most important uh, uh, aspect of defence is the economy. Yeah, I suppose so. And if you haven't got a decent economy, then, you know, you, you're going to get taken over by the Russians. Mm. So uh, I think that um, economic welfare must come first. Should we talk about what, what you think David Cameron's going to be able to achieve on this trip? I mean, he has, and many others have already said, mm. But we need a humanitarian pause. How likely is it that his visit's going to engineer anything that might sort of influence Netanyahu? Well, if he, uh, well, I don't know about the Netanyahu side. I think Netanyahu will not really listen to anyone except for the United States. Mm. Uh, but we have to go through the motions, and sometimes we can um, deliver messages for the United States that um, the United States itself might not want to give. So. Sure. Uh, but uh, if Mr. Cameron is meeting with Iranian representatives then that strikes me as a very significant uh, possibility. Because, again, if you can open some sort of uh, channel of, of talking to, uh, to Tehran, then you know, that, that has to be a good thing, because it's, it's Iran that is causing a lot of the, the, um, the problems with uh, Hamas and the Houthis, or the Houthis. You're not meant to say the Houthis. It makes them sound too much like Scots. Houthis! Houthis! Houthis. <laughs> and in the meantime, the Prime Minister is saying, look, if we have to act again, we will in the Red Sea. We have to. We have to. This is an important international shipping lane. All our goods and our oil comes through this, uh, a lot of the, um, the stuff on which we rely. Mm. And already some vessels are being turned around, going, going the long way around South Africa. It's not very good for our economies, this. It's not just our economy. Well, the whole West is... is a lot of the Europe and uh, 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 the West is looking at this and thinking, yikes, this, we have to keep this, um, this open. And just a, a bunch of terrorist boys in, in Yemen, you know, they've, they've got to be snotted. Um, the uh, soon-to-be-retired head of the British Army, going back to what I was talking yeah. to you about, interestingly today... Mr Sanders. ..has said that the British public could be called up to fight if the UK goes to war in future because our military is too small, which sort of was yeah. my beginning of... Now, is that Very a part, political. Is that a parting shot? It I, is, I yeah, because yeah. he's leaving in, in, a certain, in a bit of a huff. He's had a row with the uh, with Radkin, the uh, the chap who's the, the, the admiral who, who runs the armed forces, and uh, there's an element of uh, going with sour, uh, sour grapes there. But I think it's interesting, isn't it? If he's saying, you know, if he's getting that political, it's a sign of <coughs> a certain desperation uh, in the in the top brass that they are they're short of things. Mind you, if he did, if if we did get signed up, I mean. I don't know about you, Carl, but I, I'm, I'm not much good at marching. And um, well, no, uh, we're, we're, we're past it. We'd have to, we'd have to assume officer rank right? and sit somewhere in Whitehall making decisions. Catering right? corps. That's what uh, I. Mean. Carl, Carl and let's catering corps. But there is a serious issue here, there which is. is, are we as to, not sir Tobias Elwood and many others have said. Oh, he'd not, love to be a sir. But it's not warmongering to say that right now there is an axis in the world, an axis, I should say, of Russia, China, and Iran. There are Houthi rebels, Houthi rebels, whatever. What's happening in Gaza? And we are... I mean, you, 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 you know, you, Ukraine as well. We are not best equipped, are we? Good time to be an ally of America, isn't it? Possibly. Yeah, Donald I mean, Trump, does he win? It looks like it, yeah. I mean, I, 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 would, um, I wouldn't put bet the house on it because the, the lawyers might yet stop him running. But I would say uh, it's worth a fiver at Joe Coral. Joe Coral or any other leading bookmakers. <laughs> Quentin. We love you, Quentin. As ever. Go to Thank William you. Hill. Good of you to look in. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done, Lex. Good of you to look in, old boy.